do it because it was the best possible duck you could ever have. It was strictly like my admiration for a book that Based on all the different drying and curing and aging and salting of meats that you've seen and done, what in your mind is the best thing for like introductory level thing that a, that a hunter could do with his deer or whatever that he's not going to screw up? Like what's the easiest thing to get into and have some measure of success in it? Uh, dr dry curing whole muscle. You know, dry, dry curing whole dry, muscle. Dry, dry curing a, a loin. Uh, or, 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 yeah, any any venison muscle. And you don't mean you don't mean make jerky. No, that jerky would be uh, you would be slicing it. Thin so when you say whole muscle, you mean leaving it whole. Leaving it whole. So you're saying take a chunk of the back strap, right? And then do uh, what? With salt it. it. Give it uh, three percent salt by weight for uh, two days uh, per pound or a day per kilo, which is the standard salt method. Just sort of roll it in salt, then rinse it off. What's the, what's the ratio again? Five. Uh, uh, three percent salt. Okay. By its weight. By weight. Or just, basically, if you're just doing a whole muscle like that, just, uh, we call it um, uh, salt box method. Basically, just rolling it in salt. So it's uniformly coated in salt. Yep. Let it sit for one day uh, for every two pounds. In a refrigerator. In a refrigerator. Uh, wash it off. Hang it up in your, uh, hang it up in some relatively humid, cool place. And when it's lost 30% of its weight, slice it. And you're going to say, this is amazing. You've transformed this meat. As much as I've done stuff out of... Have you not done that? No, I've done it, but only did it hanging it in my buddy's restaurant who's got a pastry room. Because I was worried about the temperature and everything. Yeah. But how would a guy, like, how would you rig up to do that at home? What I do, I actually, I have a little mini fridge, a little dorm room fridge, and I turn it to its very lowest setting, and it'll stay about, I mean, highest setting, it'll stay about 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. Put a pan of salt water in there uh, to keep humidity, and the salt is to keep bacteria from growing in the water. Uh, and then I rig a little piece of foil underneath the freezer mechanism, which is what cools the, the unit. It'll, yeah. At that temperature, it will condense and water will drip. So oh. you have to have a little drip pan going back into your, your water. But that's where I cure all my salamis and the cure oh, really? And yeah, it's a great little curing device. So you can get totally set up at home to do it. For 90 bucks, yeah. And yeah. that's Sears, uh, Sears mini fridge. And then one properly done loin would probably have about that value. That's Absolutely. Value. And, it, and it will last it'll last until it doesn't taste good anymore which is months yeah you know it won't go bad you've preserved it that's the thing when you're talking about salt we kind of touched on this earlier with with fat but some of these things that we associate now with just just like taste pleasure but salt inhibits bacterial growth yes and you always read in old books like that like daniel boone would like salt meat mm -hmm. is that basically what he's doing or is he doing something different no he's salting the meat i mean if you really salt it heavily it will keep for years and that'd be salt pork like when people talk about salt pork yeah. that's heavily salted pork yeah that's how we that's how we explored the world we we, we just soak meat in salt so we had food forever and so we, we could dominate the universe on salted yeah. meat yeah. yeah charcuterie helped us dominate the universe <laughs> absolutely and all you need to do if it's really salt is just soak it until the salt comes out salt is a miracle and and we forget really its power it's how we created civilization it's how we preserve food People don't understand the power of salt. Earlier when we were talking, you made almost kind of a joke that like this discipline or this practice comes down to fat and salt. Right. Which now we have in our minds like the two things you're supposed to steer clear of. Right. right. In fact, um, fat and salt is what keeps us alive. Like if you do those two things, you'll be fine rather than just like... If you embrace fat and embrace <laughs> salt and not eat crap, you yeah. will be fine yeah. and you'll be happy. And you'll, your stomach will be happy and your body will be happy. I got a uh, buddy of mine who's a chef. He's always like, when someone when we talking about sausage, he's always like, oh, that's a good kind of fat. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's, he, that's means, right. he means that's the kind of fat that's part of a broader lifestyle pattern. Right, you know? right. Like, yeah, it's not, it's not the Big Mac fat. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's more of a, um, something in some level of moderation and some awareness of what you're actually doing. Yeah, don't be, you don't, can't eat all fat. Yeah. I mean, listen to your body. If you eat natural foods, your body will tell you what's good and what's bad. I mean, I love to eat Doritos. I love Doritos. I can eat a bag of Doritos. But if I eat a bag of Doritos, I feel like shit afterwards. Yeah. And so I know eating a bag of Doritos is probably not a good idea. But when I eat a really good sausage, I love the sausage, and I feel pretty good afterwards. Yeah. The thing about Doritos, when you taste a Dorito, you know that you'd never be able to make a Dorito in your home. <laughs> like, you would, it's like the minute that thing hits your tongue, you're like, this would only come from a laboratory. You could not buy what you need no chance the fact that something the second it touches your tongue you feel like it's like a narcotic <laughs> tingling like it's like some kind of like tingling narcotic it kind of is it kind of is yeah like, 
<laughs> These boys do not uh, you know, put that recipe out. No, they're after the money. They don't care about our health. Yeah. 